Hello everyone, welcome to the 30th and final episode of the Four Lads Have a Dream podcast and it is a Christmas special. Joining me as normal is regular co-host, he is the Chief Rangers writer at the Herald and Glasgow Times group and I'm still not getting used to saying that, it's Mr Chris Jack. Chris, how are you? Morning Stevie, how are we? The Rangers fans will be delighted to know that I am not the Christmas special. We have somebody far better than me on for a, for a 30th and final episode. Delighted to be here as always. Yeah, um, it's pity it's got to the 30th episode and I still can't say fluently where you work and the job you do, but never mind. Um, also joining us is um, Rangers tour guide and she's also the FIFA fan representative. She's also one of our hosts, Miss Mary McKenzie. Mary, how are you? Morning, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Um, well, I managed to get your name right. I managed to get Chris's job kind of right. So we may as well talk about the guest that's coming on this morning. So joining us for our final podcast is the one and only Mr. Chris Boyd. Chris obviously um, signed for Rangers between 2006 and 2010, later joining in 2014 and 2015. He won two league titles with Rangers um, under Walter Smith back in 2008-2009-2009-2010. Two Scottish Cups in 2007-2008-2008-2009 and Scottish League Cups 2007-2008 and 2009-2010. He also won the Crown Cup for Scotland. He scored um, over 200 goals in his his career um, with fabulous time, over 100 goals for Kilmarnock, also 100 goals for Rangers with spells um, down south at Middlesbrough alone at Nottingham Forest and out at Turkey and also in America with Portland Timbers. Chris also was capped for Scotland um, 18 times, scoring seven goals. He's one of the best goal scorers that I have seen, certainly. Um, Chris, what's your memories of um, Chris Boyd in a Rangers shirt? Like I said, we had uh, Kenny Miller on a couple of weeks ago, Stevie. Chris was my, my kind of time off going to the games and when I had my season ticket, I broke so the games and the goals that he's going to talk through, there'll be some great memories in there for a lot of the Rangers fans and I'm sure I'll have a few come back for myself as well. Just a guy that scored just so many different, scored you know, different types of goals but scored so many crucial goals and the type of, the type of striker that I, I think fans all fans all love to see. That that real big penalty box poacher, the guy that could pop up if your team needed a goal, you could rely on this boy to go and get you one. Uh, so no, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what games that he picks out and uh, hearing the like, memories that he's got of some of his, his finest strikes for Rangers. And what about you, Mary? Were you a fan of Chris? Yeah, I was a massive fan of Chris. Um, similar um, to Chris, you, you know, I was growing up and Chris Boyd was the guy that was banging in the goals for us um, every other week. So, yeah, it's really good memories of Chris. And I think, you know, looking back now, I think I appreciate him a lot more. At the time, I know there's, you know, a lot of people were criticising him for not doing this and not doing that, but... He just, you know, he can't take away the number of goals he scored for the club. And I think um, now you'd love to have a guy like that in and around the club, you know, especially a Rangers fan and, you know, a natural goal scorer. Morning, Chris. Thanks for coming on to, uh, to join us for our, our 30th and final uh, Four Lads podcast. First of all, thanks for having me on um, the podcast. If we go back to your uh, playing days, Chris, we're going to talk through some of your uh, favourite uh, goals later on. If I can go through your, your three favourite Rangers games, I'm assuming that's quite hard to... Uh, to narrow down, what's the first one that makes your that makes your shortlist? When I, when you when you go back and obviously growing up a Rangers fan, and then you know that first game is such for me to, to pull on that Rangers jersey and run out to Ibrox against Peterhead, um, you know, and then obviously to score a hat trick is something I'll never forget on a personal note. Um, but you know, I I always believe that being a Rangers player, you need to win something, and um, you know, winning your first trophy was um, was special against. Dundee United. Um, it had been a long time. I'd been at the, the, the club a couple of seasons and not been able to, um, you know, deliver uh, a trophy. You'd scored lots of goals, but I think that it was getting to the stage where, yeah, you were scoring, but as I said, Rangers. Um, the history of the football club is is um, is winning trophies, and um, that was one of the you know, the Dundee United game, the cup final was a was a big moment for me to to finally get my hands on silverware, and um, and then again you look at. That's the first competition you win as, as um, you know, as a player, and then you, you know when you when you go to to winning leagues as such. But I think that my my favourite moment would have to be Manchester as well, albeit we lost. But I think that um, you know just to be part of a unique um, journey that the club was on, 
Um, to get all the way to Manchester, I don't think that um, we expected it. I don't think the manager wanted to get there anyway, uh, the gaffer, because I think the second, once we get put out of the Champions League, I think we went to Panathinaikos and he started me up front, so he was obviously wanting knocked out that night as well, because I didn't play the European games, but um, <laughs> it was it was a, a journey that, um, you know, a group of players, um, staff, everybody connected with the club that we'll never forget. So, I mean, that would be my favourite moment, but, you know, for me on a personal note, obviously my debut against Peter Head, and then, um, you know, getting your hands on silverware for the first time and winning a... So I've gave you four games there. Do the do, do the games where you win something, do you know, the cup finals and the days that you clinch the league, do, do they mean just that wee bit more because of also what it means to the team and what it means to the club? Now, you, you might not have had, there might be days where you don't have the best deal on a personal level, but the days that you win something, now they're, that's what football is all about. It's all about memories, it's all about success, as you say, especially at a, a big club like Rangers. Yeah, the, the, I think that the, usually when you look at cup competitions, yeah, it's moved now, but it was what February, March time when, when the League Cup was finished. Um, the league's obviously towards the end of, of May, uh, sorry, the beginning of May, and then obviously the Scottish Cup the week after that. I think that when you get to, especially the Scottish Cup, um, you know, the League Cup's always, you, you say, listen, can we get to it? And if you can deliver that, that sets you up for, you know, the, the, the business end of the season as such. The league is, is over a, a long period of time that you need to perform week in, week out. And I think that's a, the pressures of playing with Rangers, that you're under that pressure, that scrutiny, every single game. And then when you get to a stage where, you know, been fortunate enough to, to win a couple of uh, leagues and, and obviously the Scottish Cups as well. When you get to the latter stages of the season, I think it's just a relief that you know that you've you've got there. The hard work has paid off all season. You've been able to deliver. And um, yes, the league's the be-all and end-all. We get that. But I think the Scottish Cup has got a, a place um, that it, it sets everybody up for, well, sorry, ending that season, but looking forward to, to the next season as well because you've delivered that on that last game. Um, you've you've sent all the fans away happy for that. You know, well, what is it now? <laughs> Three four weeks holiday you get as players before you come back because of obviously qualifying for Europa and stuff like that. Um, but it gives the fans that longer period to um, to glow or whatever they need to do over you know the five six weeks that you usually had off in the summer. So you know the, the league's obviously the be all and end all, but. I always felt like delivering that Scottish Cup for Rangers was was a big moment as well. And as I said, I was fortunate enough to do that twice as a player as well. And um, you know, it's 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 just a relief come the end of the season for all the hard work that you've put in for you know the, the seven eight months beforehand. How how important was uh, the old fun games and the old fun goals for you? Because there's a lot of talk about whether you would play in those games and the managers there were different options at, at different times. But you know, for you to play in those games as a fan and to score in those games as a fan, what did that mean to you? And is that Celtic game where you did get that goal against them? Is that why the, the ones that can stand out for you? I mean, it's definitely one of the ones that stands out for me. Um, scoring against Celtic. Um, you know, but I think back then that it was going to be my one and only goal against Celtic. No, because you know when you were scoring the goals, you were scoring, you felt as if going into every game that you would score. But... You know, I think, and I've, listen, I totally get it, um, having conversations with the gaffer after that. And, um, you know, I can totally understand why now looking back that, you know, you maybe missed out on a, a lot of big European games and and um, Celtic games as such, because, you know, that from, from where I was at my best in and around that box, you know, it might have been the case that we weren't in it, that area as often, um, you know, and, and we had to find a way as a team to get to that area. And, um, you know, from... from Looking back at the Rangers uh, Celtic games, the old fun games, and, and obviously the big European games, at the time you were bitterly disappointed to miss out. But as I said, I totally understand it now. Um, yeah, listen, I, I played in you know, Champions League nights, I've played in Europa League nights, I've played UEFA Cup nights. Um, and there's nothing comes near um, you know, that old fun game, um, the, the noise, the. Um, but it's, it's the build up the whole week, um, you know, the, the papers. And everything, the podcast nowadays, everything's um, you know at fever pitch. And um, I mean, when you go back, then it was it was two outstanding teams fighting against each other at a level that you knew you had to perform every single week um, because if you didn't, you were going to get punished. And, and I think that's one thing that drives both clubs on. To be honest, is is, is the fear of failure. And um, you know, f- from our point of view, we always looked at it and said, well, sorry, I looked at it and said that I might miss out the big ones, but to allow us to be at that stage the following season, you had to perform on the Saturday or the Tuesday night against 
you know, maybe League Cup uh, games or against, you know, league opposition where I was maybe in. And, you know, you still played a big part in it, even though you felt as if you weren't part of, that you were still part of, but didn't have a big part in the big games at that moment in time. I mean, I knew that to do my job, to get us to that stage, to be able to play, um, you know, in, in, the, in European competitions or challenge at the top of the table, you had to beat the bottom the bottom six teams. You had to beat the teams that I was in around about you. And um, for me, I was fortunate enough to, to play and be picked, selected from the managers in a lot of those games. And a lot of the memories um, from my time at the Rangers comes from those games because, as I said, to score the amount of goals that I did in such a short period of time, um, live the dream of, of wearing that number nine jersey for Rangers, scoring against Celtic. Um, as I said, albeit it was only once, but you know it's something that nobody can take away from me. And um, you know, I, I could say that of one of the, or I was one of the, the the lucky ones to have not only wore that Rangers jersey, but you know that number nine jersey that means so much to every striker. I think that's that's uh, that's played with the football club. Chris, just moving on now to your top three favourite goals. Um, I'm assuming probably an old firm one will fill in uh, fit in there. So, um, would you like just to cover what your favourite ones are? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to contradict myself a couple of things here. Um, I think that the Celtic one would go in at, at number at number three. Um, obviously, it scored against Celtic and everything, but at the time, you, you look at it, and, and as I said, I didn't expect it to be um, you know, my, my last goal. I think it was Nacho that picked it up, managed to dink it over the top and uh, and had it on my left, left foot. Um, and it was just, I think there was a lot of pressure. There had, there had been a lot of pressure on me because everybody, you were scoring goals at the rate you were scoring and you weren't able to do it against Celtic. And maybe it was the, the only time that I felt as if you know, I had to prove something to, to not only myself, but to people that I could score against Celtic. And as I, I probably went into those games not being myself as, as such. And, and um, you know, usually in front of a goal, I was, I was calm, collected and... and um, you know, that was one of my strengths, but against, you know, probably Celtic and maybe against even in, in European nights, I can remember a header against Seville that I missed as well. And I look at them and say, you know, was I in the right frame of mind going into those games in terms of just relax and enjoy it? Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, and, I, and I think that, yes, the goal against Celtic was delighted. I was delighted to get it. I think you could tell by the, the reaction from me running to the, the, the touchline with Coiste and celebrating. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I think that was going to be my last against against them, but it was. So, yeah, that'll go in at number three. Number two, I'm going to... There's, there's three or four goals I could probably put in the same bracket. Um, you know, my, my goal against Partick Thistle in the, in the CIS Cup in 2-7, two, 2-7-8 seven, two, seven, with the left foot. I think it was Stevie Davis that picked the ball up in the middle of the pitch and a long diagonal. Um, but, you know, that was... For me, that goal was more to do with the hard work that I had put in as, as a youngster because I can always remember that, you know, looking at it from a striker's point of view, yeah, I could finish with my right foot, but I, I can remember a conversation with, you know, um, one of my managers at Kilmarnock at the time that said, you know, you can hit the ball with your left foot. If you can work at that and you can get that to um, the level of your right foot, you know, you'll get a lot more goals. And I think that night was probably been able to catch a volley with your bad foot as such, the way I did coming over my head um, and get the power and accuracy back across the goalkeeper um, was when I when I left the field, or sorry, when I had, you know, when I went in the back of the net and I left the field and then I look back at that, that was a moment where I said, you know, the hard work as a youngster paid off. And um, I think it's something that every youngster should should um, should do, especially if you're a striker. Um, it's, it's tried because, you know, I wasn't blessed with blistering pace, you know, I could get away from people over a couple of yards, but it was always a case of, I mean, I think anybody that played against me would say that, that um, I could go either way. And, and it was something later on that I, I was able to add to my game that I was comfortable going to my right, comfortable going to my left, and it led to so many goals. So, I mean, I'm going to put that one in there because it was probably that moment of, you know, the years of practice that the technique was, was spot on. Um, and as I said, it didn't just happen overnight and it wasn't a fluke because it was a loads more that was similar to, to that in terms of my left foot. But, you know, there was goals against the Fermina, a volley, my Scottish Cup final strike, the final um, against Queen of the South. Um, but I'm going to go back to, and this is the old strikers one, that, um, you know, two yards is the exact same as, as 20 yards for a striker. Uh, I'm going to go back to that, you know, Dundee United game. Um, yes, I equalised on the, just before the end of the game with that Matt Kerr. 
slack back pass, and I, I, may, I managed to go into that. But I think the the goal and in, in, in extra time, um, you know, when Stevie Davis dinked it up to the back post, that I was able to get there ahead of Lee Wilkie. There was a you know it was about three or four years at the back post, um, and and we got the game to, to extra time. Uh, sorry, to penalties, we were able to. You know, I was able to score the winning goal then, but you know that goal there was going back to the relief when I looked after the game of of scoring, uh, sorry, of lifting your first trophy. Um, yes, it was a it probably wasn't. A, you know, people will look at it and say, you know, out of all the goals you've scored, that's your 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 favourite goal. But I think you know those two in that game just meant so much because you know being a Rangers player. You know, I mean, I had offers to leave the club at that time as well. Um, and I didn't want it because I hadn't won anything. I didn't want to be somebody who'd scored, you know, 100 odd goals for the football club. And then you leave without winning something. You know, you, you were brought up with the Rangers dominating Scottish football. I wanted to be part of that history. I wanted to win something. And that's why I'll, I'll pick, you know, either of those goals as, as, as my favourite goal for Rangers because it meant so much that for the team to, to get over the line and actually lift that first trophy um, because it had been a couple of years towards the end of all obviously Alex Rain in charge and then um, Paul Le Guin coming in it didn't quite work out but when Walter came back we just felt as if that, that was the turning point getting that first trophy and then you know the next three year was um, you know another successful period in Rangers football club's history. I think it's quite uh, interesting when you talk about these games because, as you say, they might, the goals might not be a you know spectacular, stunning goal, but from a fan's perspective, they mean so much. You know, they're, they're the moments that really get you know the fans excited and, and really make a huge difference. And yeah, the ones we all remember. percent. You know, the, the, I think it's the, the, those are the ones where you look back at in your career and you know, as I said, the. the the ones you strike from 20, 25 yards, I mean, and you know, I can get through it, maybe it was five or six of them. The film, as I said, Motherwell, um, the Scottish Cup. Um, you know, th- there's been Dundee United a few times. There has been games where you've scored probably better goals. But when I look back at my time at Rangers and, and, and you want to, um, as I said, get your hands on silverware and, and deliver that for the football club, for the fans, you know, being part of it as a fan growing up and seeing the club winning everything. Um, you know, to, to get your hands on silverware meant so much, and to be, you know, to be a, a big part of it that day. You know, I was a substitute. Um, I came on, you know, managed to to, to get that back pass that Matt here and, and tuck it away. Um, you know, to, to get it to extra time, and then we we fell behind again. Um, to, I think it was De Vries goal um, for Dundee United, and then later on get ourselves back into it. Um, you know, they, they, those were the games where you remember so much. You, you remember. Because you've scored, and as I said, it might not have been the cleanest of of, uh, of strikes. The first one, the header, might not have been the greatest of, of headers either. But to get above, you know, two big defenders and get it in there, and I think you can tell by the you know the, the determination and the way the way I went and attacked the ball that it was all or nothing because it was getting to the stage where um, you know we were up against it, we were struggling to get back into the game, um, and just to to, to to the relief from the stands, and then I think once you. You could tell Dundee United um, it was it was a blow for them, and even getting into penalties, I think that we kind of knew that um, if Stett went up, that it was it was it was all over. Um, you just get that feeling that you know having scored the two goals and then you, you've got a chance to, to win it. Um, it was it was it was brilliant, and um, it's the fastest I've ever ran after that cup final. To be honest, I think to, to celebrate the other side with all the Rangers fans at, at Hamden, it was um, it was a great day. And as I said, the, the most important thing for me was not the goals; um, it was you know getting my hands on that silverware for the first time. Chris, uh, thanks for joining us on our um, on our last podcast, um, a real Christmas special. Um, just want to wish you all the best. With um, obviously, we'll be in regular contact with five stars, but um, wish you all the best for Christmas. Um, you've done a brilliant thing with your, your charity recently. We'll um, encourage everybody to go and check out, you, you know, your charity cycle. But um, thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me and good luck with everything in the future. And to everyone, viewers as well, have a good Christmas and a happy new year. So a huge thank you again to um, Chris Boyd for coming on um, our final podcast. A real nice way to, to end it after having episode 29 with um, Dave King, which is obviously a really kind of serious and emotive thing. Mary, it was nice to look back on um, some of his, his favourite goals. That that cup final, obviously, one where he more or less single-handedly won himself. Um, fabulous volley at Motherwell, um, sorry, at Partick Thistle. But he scored so many good goals. He scored 
a magnificent kind of half volley against Motherwell at home, a brilliant half volley against Dunfermline away. And these are only the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of Chris Boyd. He really had um, lethal, you know, finishing ability around the box and um, somebody that I really, really enjoyed watching. Yeah, I'm exactly the same as you. I, I found that, you know, you could do that. You could hit a, a fantastic screamer from distance and and really um, then go up the same game and have a tap in from a couple of yards out. But, you know, the every goal meant so much. And I think you see the celebrations and enjoyment. You could tell he just loved playing for the football club. And as a fan, you, you can only appreciate that and um, also be slightly jealous that he's out there getting to do that and, and make everyone feel really good and enjoy uh, their football. But um, as it's, he's, he's just one of these guys that I think everyone in the Rangers support um, really you know, remembers his time at the club really well and um, he deserves all the success that he got. He played in some fantastic Rangers sides, had some really good runs. You know, As I said, the European run was... Um, really special at the club and to be involved in that was just so historic but even to go then you know to the Scottish Cup final that same year and um, with a pretty dodgy moustache but still go on and, and essentially win us that game as well. Yeah uh, and obviously I remember when he banged in the free kick in the Scottish Cup he was pointing away to his um, moustache. Um, yeah these are great memories. Um, obviously um, right in my kind of era of, of going home and away and, and kind of enjoying these games um, Chris, we obviously asked you, you know, Chris Boyd, um, what he kind of meant to you beforehand, but he's also set up his own charity, the Chris Boyd Charity. He's raised over £4,000 doing a, a 60 mile round um, trip for cycling. He's, he's really in a peak condition. He's had a bit of a re- renaissance as well with the, with the Rangers support, and we're all enjoying watching him on Sky and things. Um, it, it, he really has become. Um, the kind of like go to um, enjoyable figure for for many um, in the media. Out with yourself, Chris. Obviously. Well, ov- ov- obviously, obviously. Thanks very much. It's only taking you thirty episodes to give me a compliment, but I like you with it eventually. Uh, I think uh, well, it is, it's, yeah, it's a Christmas special, mate. So <laughs> it's always uh, it's always interesting when players. Uh, can you can bring an end to a playing career. You always wonder what they're going to do next. If they're going to go and to my side of it and you uh, come into the media side if they won't be a coach you know, or, or be a man just you know, can drift away from the game uh, completely I think that the, the transformation in Chris is a wind I know uh, some of the guys that are also worked with from Chris's first spell to his second spell uh, when he came back in terms of just how good he was with the media his time over in America uh, really did wonders for him I think and, and you hear him as a as a pundit and an analyst and also his, his, his newspaper column just now he's really gave forged a, a career for himself in, in that side of it and as you say the Rangers fans have really been uh, certainly enjoying his, his content over, over the last uh, couple of months and hopefully there's, a, hopefully there's plenty of more of that to come over the next uh, few weeks and months as the, as the season unfolds um, and we'll have to give up a great mention to his, his charity work as well. I've done some uh, stuff doing his golf day at uh, Tom Brady, done a couple of other bits over the, over the years and uh, the money that he's raised and, and the awareness that he's made, uh, raised, sorry, uh, in memory of his brother. Uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic effort. Um, certainly at, at this time of year, uh, I know it's something that'll be uh, close to a lot of people's hearts. I urge MD uh, to go on, you know, look at the uh, so, uh, social media stuff that he does, go and check out the website. Uh, and if there's anything that uh, Boydie can help you with, I'm sure he'd be delighted to do so. Yeah, I found him to be a, a really great guy from the start of kind of working with Five Stars, um, himself, Graham and Arthur. Um, Chris has been obviously a, a huge help um, and obviously enjoying the, the team's form at the moment. And just to say as well, people may tune in and kind of wonder why we didn't ask him about current day, you know, Stephen Gerrard and things like that. It's because we couldn't. Um, Chris is contractually kind of obliged to Sky his own pod and things like that, but he was still determined. Um, to come on and kind of speak to us and that's why we went and done a wee bit of the kind of favourite games and favourite goal kind of stuff because um, he, he really did want to come on and um, that, that kind of brings us to the end um, Chris 30 episodes when we started this I don't think we really um, thought we would have the level of guest on that we had um, we've had great fun what's been um, a couple of your highlights and uh, you can even throw in your favourite blooper if you wish I think there's, there's more than one uh, favourite blooper. Most of all, you cutting the uh, former Rangers chairman off before he'd even said hello to us last week. But we'll let, we'll let that one slide. Uh, I think it was I there. Think the, <laughs> I think the the last few episodes, I think, have been right up there with some of the best ones we've done. Uh, the, uh, the special last week with uh, Dave King and Laura Fox, a really important issue for the 
uh, for the club. Uh, I know the Billy Gilmore one uh, meant a lot to herself. It was great to catch up with Billy having uh, been down at uh, the FA Cup game with Hull to see him last year. Uh, and certainly, you know, some of the ones that we've done, you think back to that, uh, the Alec McLeish ones, the Shoot McCall ones, the uh, two partners that we've done, the, my favourite 20 minutes or so might just be Alec McLeish and Alec Ray. I think they tuned the fat about helicopter Sundays and, and cup wins, and we really didn't need to do very much for that uh, for that period, apart from just you know, sit back and enjoy it and listen. So, you know, when you when you uh, floated the idea of doing a podcast uh, all, all that time ago, I wasn't sure how how it was going to go. I wasn't sure who we would get, but I think between us, we've managed to come up with some uh, some great names. We've relived uh, some great times for the uh, for the club and for the fans, uh, and some of the comments we've had and some of the feedback we've had is. I certainly made it all worth it. So I only now thank you and Mary for your if your time and for your efforts. Thank the guys that have had on on the podcast for coming on, and also thank the fans for listening and tuning in. And I hope they've enjoyed it. Yeah, it has been incredible. Um, one of my favourite moments was um, a bit surreal. A way back in February when we recorded Ian Ferguson. And um, our first recording, he decided himself and it didn't sound that good because he was just over the phone. So that very afternoon, he, he came over to my house and um, chapped in the door and sat in the conservatory while we re-recorded. And to be sitting with a, a real legend of uh, the nine in a row team, uh, making him a cup of, cup of tea. And um, that was really surreal and exciting. And he's kept in touch since. Um, to do a live Instagram as well with Lorenzo Amoruso was a lot of fun. He was very uh, an- animated and um, that was great fun. But I suppose my, my favourite blooper and uh, a great time to bring Mary in as well because it's been great to have Mary with us, um, not throughout, but um, obviously uh, kind of, you know, second half of our podcast and things. Mary was present when uh, Chris asked Kenny Miller what it was like to play against Argentina. Um, only for us all to to find out when Kenny um, retorted that that was not him, it was indeed Lee Miller. Um, that has to go up there as a, a favourite wee moment as as well. Um, Mary, you were there for that. How, how have you enjoyed being with us for the pod? To be fair, um, I, I would have assumed it was Kenny as well. I don't know who would have given Lee Miller a, a, a cap at that time, but uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, I, I've, I really, really appreciate um, being invited on. I've, I've had an absolute blast talking to some fantastic people and um, just getting to listen and talk football is, is, is what I love doing. So, um, yeah, I've, I've had a great time. And I must admit, for if you're talking bloopers, the first podcast, we had to re-record completely from the start. So, um, yeah, I, I just assumed that that happened every week. Oh, that was with Lana, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to. I, I would like to blame somebody else, but that was completely my fault. Um, I don't even know how that happened, but um, we just simply didn't record it. Um, and yeah, that was a that was a bit of a mistake. Um, and we also had Chris. We also had similar with Alex McLeish because when we recorded with him and played it back, it was just completely unedible and, we, and he was great with us he actually we actually benefited out of that because obviously we had the Alex Ray one and I'm a bit like you um when they started talking about helicopter Sunday um most of the feedback we had that week was we, we didn't hear from any of you um, and that was during a real enjoyable time where we done you know maybe 10 podcasts in 10 weeks just to try and give everybody something to do and lift the spirits during the the initial lockdown of, of COVID. I think uh, uh, through this wee chat we've had here, I basically realise that you have made more mistakes than me and Mary combined here. So uh, I'll, I'll let you off for throwing me under the bus with the uh, Lee Miller one. I apologise to Lee Miller next time I see him. Uh, and I just I just gave Kenny an extra, an extra Scotland cap that day, not that he needed it. Uh, and in terms of uh, Big Egg, he was a brilliant to deal with. And I was actually on, on the journey back up uh, from home uh, the FA Cup game that we're uh, down seeing Billy. We're just getting thrown names about. And we both had the kind of light bulb moment of they think they get Alec McLeish, um, and thankfully, that's a, a big egg was great to deal with on on both occasions. Um, it's always it's always like a part of the job having to phone people and try and get interviews out of them. But it always amazes me the uh, the, the time that people give up, especially when you just want to talk to somebody about Rangers and you want to go through our famous cup wins or famous games or best goals, as we just did with Chris there. The, there's still a real affection for the club from people that served it so well, uh, and I said to get the. Uh, the breadth of, of names to get even going back right to the start to have big uh, Derek Johnson was a real pleasure having having known him for so long and also done his column with the uh, even time as well having guys like that on that you have that relationship with and guys that haven't spoken to before uh, 
it's been a it's been a real kind of a great personal journey through the time on uh, furlough being off. It certainly kept, it kept me going during a uh, lockdown as well. So uh, and I say hugely appreciative of, of both your efforts and uh, uh, we shall uh, uh, we'll see what the future holds for us. Yeah, a perfect way to um, finish um, our final podcast um, to thank our two main sponsors, um, KGM Printing. You can find them obviously on, on Twitter at KGM Printing. They've got their own shop in Dunfries and without their help um, genuinely, um, the, the wee bit of financial help they, they have given us helps run the, the um, podcast for, for Jersey and things and um, also helps us do a lot of fundraising for Rangers Youth Development Company. Um, so it's a massive thanks to them and the same goes for Customs Kitchen Factory Alley and, and the boys over there. Um, just fantastic help and support for us since we started. Um, helps us uptake our you know, WordPress for the blog and all that sort of stuff. Um, and also, again, allows us to support Rangers Youth Development. Um, everything we do is, is non-profit, and these guys have really, really helped us. And also to Stuart Franklin and Jersnet, who has edited and um, hosted every one of our episodes and um, thoroughly enjoyed our, our time over in, in Jersnet. Um, but that is all. Um, we have had a really great time, but it's not the end for Chris, Mary and myself. Um, we are moving to... Um, an exciting project on um, 1010 Podcasts, which is, is now live. You can find it at www.1010podcast.com and the 10 is spelled T-E-N and then it's 10podcast.com um, and that's a, a Rangers um, podcast on there with Alex Ray and Mark Haitley and myself. I've also got my own show, Rangers Fans Corner, which is a little bit light-hearted um, and uh, a regular look at all things Rangers, which I'm delighted to say that Chris and Mary have accepted my um, begging to come and join me on them. So I'll look forward to working with them a wee bit further. But thank you to everyone. Um, the blog will continue and hopefully the good form of the team and the management will continue also. Um, thanks for joining us. We've had a fantastic time. 30 brilliant episodes to speak to guys that have scored um, you know, vital goals for the club, won European titles. Um, managed us to trebles, um, managed us through through different periods, and like Sister McCall and things. Um, had people on Instagram chats when Big Amber, so it really has been a ball, but none of it could be possible. Over 100,000 people have listened to our shows, and it's been absolutely fantastic. So thank you, everyone. And until um, the next blog or, or whenever, please have a, a very Merry Christmas, stay safe, and ignore the nonsense, the irrelevant, and the noise. <laughs>